tonight we're going to be talking about risk management and the risk management programs. And those programs are to protect the school district's human, financial, and physical assets and resources from the consequences of loss or risks. And we will be talking about group health. We're going to be talking about dental, vision, life insurances, fleet insurances, property insurance, liability insurance, workers' comp. Those will be the items that will entail uh, tonight's presentation. Story. Having gone through my doctorate program, not one course in risk management at the master's level or the doctorate level. Everything that I learned was on the job. I decided that if ever I was in a position to teach school finance, things such as that, I was going to make certain that this topic, critical topic, was discussed. You've already heard that any place between 15 to 25 percent of your budget comprises risk management programs for a school district. Huge investment. Huge investment. And with today's climate of increasing costs in these areas, the School officials must be well grounded to understand these programs. Our intent is to give you an understanding of those particular programs. The TAN sheet, as we go through the presentation tonight, you can use that sheet as a foundation to kind of follow along with the presentation. So, our intent is to raise your awareness of these critical programs that must be managed effectively. Might also tell you that, probably not telling you anything you don't know, health insurance, the number one reason schools go on strike. Therefore, you can see why uh, it's very important to have an understanding of these type of programs. Health insurance. Of course, you understand what we're talking about here. An individual gets ill, they go to the doctor, they go to the health care provider, they go to the hospital, and with group health insurance, they, they are uh, covered uh, for some of those expenses, for the majority of those expenses. And I should give you a little bit of a history here. Uh, 30, 40 years ago, schools were not giving uh, employees salary raises. However, health coverage was cheap. Therefore, they provided very rich plans. In fact, uh, a school district near me uh, two years ago was paying 100% of the entire health care for their employees. We have, a, we have a tiered system where the more veteran teachers started at 100% and then it's tiered down three steps and over the course of negotiations those tiers have changed so that effective. now they're paying a little bit of more but not still as much as like and myself. at some point in time, I'm guessing, uh, all employees were getting 100% paid. Right. And in order to be able to negotiate uh, that situation, the veteran employees who were on the negotiating team said, we don't want to give that up, but we don't really mind if you, uh, cost, uh, if you increase the cost of that for uh, the younger employees. And um, that's one way to, to view this whole process. And individuals who use their health care programs tend to know more about their health care programs. One of the challenges that I had uh, in administering these programs 
I wasn't a user. I very seldom went to the doctor and very seldom had to uh, fill out or file for any claim. Therefore, I was at a double uh, hole as far as I was concerned in knowing and understanding health care in particular. services and paying for them. Different types of managed care plans work differently and include preferred provider organizations or PPOs, health maintenance organizations or HMOs, and point of service plans or POS plans. The bottom line is that it is important for you to understand your own health plan choices and how they vary in three key areas. These three key areas are how your plan addresses, one, your choice of providers, two, your out-of-pocket expenses, and three, how your bills are paid, or the paperwork factor. Generally, there is an inverse relationship among these three plan characteristics. For example, if your choice in doctors is limited, you will probably pay less out of your own pocket for the care. If your choice is not limited, you may have to pay higher amounts for your care. You need to look at these three key, key areas when determining what is the best choice of plans for you, assuming that you have a choice. Let's talk about each one of these issues separately. First, your choice of providers. Most plans limit full coverage or best coverage to doctors and hospitals who are participating in the health plan. What this means is that if you choose a doctor outside of your health plan's participants, you may have to pay all or a larger portion of the bill. Generally, HMOs have the greatest limitations on choice. Other managed care plans like PPOs or point of service plans have limits, but they may not be as great as the HMOs. Indemnity plans, also known as fee for service, provide you with the greatest choice. You will usually also pay the highest rates for these types of plans. Second, your out-of-pocket costs. Generally, the plans who limit your choices the most are the ones where you will have the lowest out-of-pocket costs. For example, in some HMOs, you may have significant limits on your choice of doctor, but you may also not have to pay anything out of your pocket for the doctor's services. Third, how your bills are paid. And again, there is an inverse relationship between choice and payment in most cases. When a plan limits your choice in doctors or hospitals, you are likely to have little to no paperwork to contend with. Plans, like indemnity plans, that provide you with a much broader range of choice are likely to deluge you with paperwork in order to have the bills paid. There are three types of managed care plans. There are PPOs, point of service plans, and HMOs. Preferred provider organizations, a PPO is a form of managed care closest to an indemnity plan. A PPO has arrangements with certain doctors, hospitals, and other providers of care who have agreed to accept lower fees from the insurer for their services. Your costs will be lower if you choose in-network providers. Health maintenance organizations, or HMOs, are the oldest form of managed care plans. They offer members a range of benefits, including preventive care for a set monthly fee. HMOs will give you a list of doctors from which to choose a primary care physician who will coordinate your care with specialists. With most HMOs, you will pay nothing when you receive well or sick care. Point of service plans, with a POS, your primary care doctor makes referrals to other providers in the plan when you need a specialist. You can also refer yourself outside of the plan and still get some coverage. If the doctor makes the referral, the plan pays all or most of the bill. If you refer yourself, you will usually have to pay a higher percentage of the bill than if you saw a plan doctor. Now, how do you determine which type of plan works best for you? The bottom line 
is to go back to the three key criteria, your choice of doctors, your out-of-pocket costs, and how your bills are paid. What matters most to you? Does this sound like you? One, I want to hold down my costs as much as possible. Two, I prefer not to fill out forms or keep receipts. Three, routine and preventative care should be paid for by my plan. And four, I don't mind if I have to wait for these services to be scheduled for an available appointment with my doctor. If this sounds like you, then a traditional HMO may work best for you. Or does this sound more like you? One, I want complete freedom to choose doctors and hospitals. Two, I travel a lot or have children that live away from me and we may need to see doctors in other parts of the country. Three, I don't mind filling out forms or keeping receipts and sending them in for payment. And four, I'm willing to pay additional for the cost of routine and preventive care. Five, I like being able to get an appointment for the services I need when I want them. If this sounds like you, then a point of service or a PPO plan will probably work best for you. Lastly, I'd like to talk for a minute about what happens if you have a pre-existing condition. A pre-existing condition is any medical condition diagnosed or treated before the patient joins a plan. The law, known as HIPAA, now limits health insurers' ability to deny care based upon a pre-existing condition. In the past, insurers required a waiting period before covering pre-existing conditions for new members. Under this new law, a pre-existing condition is covered without a waiting period when you join a new group plan as long as, and this is key, as long as you have been insured without any interruption during the previous 12 months. This means that if you remain insured for 12 months or more, you will be able to go from one job to another and your pre-existing condition will be covered without additional waiting periods, even if you have a chronic illness. In the event that you did have a lapse in coverage and you have a pre-existing condition, the longest you will have to wait before you are covered for that condition is 12 months. This is a better solution, but it's still not the best. Please apply this information if and when you find yourself in the position of assessing and selecting health plans. If you choose a plan that is closely aligned with what you value, you will have a better health care experience and improve your chances of getting the best possible health care. Many of you are provided a specific type of plan. Many of you are provided a specific type of plan within your employment. Let's hear, what, what type of plans do you have? PPO. You have PPO. You have PPO. PPO. Anybody else? Some plans, schools, provide you a choice between a PPO or an HMO. Typically, if you have uh, the choice of the HMO, your costs are less. The district's costs are less. However, you end up uh, being limited on which doctors you may go to in network. You still might be able to go to uh, doctors out of network, but it's going to cost you more money. And so some school districts put the onus on the employee to make the decision whether they want an HMO or a PPO. Does any of your schools have that arrangement? No, no. Blair? Uh, you have HMO. Okay. Let's take a look at what's happened with the, with the industry. The industry continues to change. And you'll notice that in 1988, most of the plans were traditional, with just a, uh, a few uh, PPOs and a few HMOs. Go to 19, uh, 2003, and you'll see that now we have fewer traditional plans uh, and PPOs, and we did a little 
look here, and there were more people that said their, their schools offered PPOs than HMOs, so we were fitting right in. There are many more schools that now offer PPOs uh, than HMOs, although uh, many, many more are, are in that way than traditional uh, versus uh, POS. And around here, there aren't a whole lot of points of service districts. There aren't very, very many districts that uh, even offer that to their employees. So, uh, and I know that that's dated. I would say that if we were looking at 2013, we would probably see that the PBOs have even declined a little bit more, and the HMOs have probably increased a little bit more. The, the, the data that I can discover here uh, was uh, obviously uh, dated, and I couldn't find anything that more current with that. COBRA, a very important concept. Who can tell me about COBRA? What is COBRA? You don't need to tell me what the, the uh, uh, consolidated omnibus, whatever it is, you don't need to tell me that. Yeah, I don't know what it stands yeah. for, but COBRA kicks in if, I believe it's from the government or something. Or maybe it, it's your employer. It, 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 well. it, it is a law that if, is, was passed by the, the, the federal government on to uh, employee, employers. So if I leave a company, I think it's if I quit or become fired, then I know COBRA like sends you a letter and they say, you can buy our health insurance for maybe the next year. Yes. If you become separated from your employer for whatever reason, you are, uh, your employer is required to offer you the, your continued benefits at your cost. It's, really it's at your cost. Also. Pardon me? Isn't that kicking if you go on strike? Or you know, yeah, probably, that, probably if you went on strike uh, because you would be considered separated. So yes, COBRA would probably kick in and there'd probably uh, be some conversation uh, yeah. re regarding the continuation of those health benefits <clears throat> uh, at that particular point. So yes. Uh, that that's basically COBRA. Now, uh, you're a school administrator, and you know that there's going to be some some individuals that are going to be uh, reduced. They're they're going to be losing their employment, and someone comes to you and says, "Could you please explain COBRA to me? I'm not real sure how it works. What ought you do?" What, what ought you do? Mary Alice, what, what do you think you ought to do if that person comes to you tomorrow? And, and I know that people are getting ready for cuts and things like that, and they come to you and they say, now I've heard about COBRA. I, for me, you would have to, I would, you would have to explain it to them. So okay. They know what's out there for them and what their cost is going to be. And, and, and Basically, that you're, the, so you're uh, not I, trying to hide anything, right? And, and and it is it is a uh, an established law. We've got to do this. Uh, my the the reason I asked that question is you might be asked that question if you were ever in a in a position like that. You might be asked this as a coworker for that matter. Basically, uh, you do not have to get the details. I can't tell you off the top of my head, it's 12 months, or I, I, I don't know. I know basically what the program is. What you do is you give them the basics of the program and say, you need to go talk to the treasurer. Yeah. <laughs> and the treasurer is going to need to explain it in more depth. They, they, and noticed our treasurer, budding, aspiring treasurer here, was the one who answered the question. Do you deal with COBRA at your work? I deal with a lot of health benefits for mm -hmm. our money. Yes. So, so. And they get, like she said, they get laid off or whatever, yes. so they get on COBRA. Yep, yep. A lot of times our union president has that type of information mm -hmm. to provide to people just because they yes. get the information and through OEA, you yes. get support. Absolutely, absolutely. And so therefore, there's another outlet uh, for that information. So, uh, once again, COBRA. True story. Sad, true story. There was a superintendent, unnamed, in this area, an individual 
had to, was on disability because they had cancer. And they were given, um, I'm not sure if it was a year, it was terminal. This individual I hear went to the superintendent and said, please tell me about COBRA. He said, we don't, we don't, know, we don't do that here. True story. Now, I don't know if he didn't know about it, which would have been my guess, or what the game was there, but sad, sad story. Sad story. Um, the person eventually had to go to other sources, found out that the school had to offer COBRA, and eventually got COBRA. But once again, you know, continuing to point out the need for you to be in the know, to be in the know. Welcome back to First Business Morning News. Well, summertime or not, your company may be making decisions over the next couple of weeks that could affect your health insurance premiums come the first of the year in 2007. You see, health care costs continue climbing, and companies as well as workers are trying to figure out how to wrestle with those higher costs and really spread the higher costs around. Some companies turning to what are called consumer-driven health insurance plans to try to keep the higher costs down. Now, these types of plans aim to give workers more information as well as more incentives to spend their health insurance dollars better. These plans can range from catastrophic care, covering really only the most severe health care crises, to health savings accounts, allowing people to save money tax-free and then withdraw to cover doctor visits or medicine bills. Humana Insurance, for instance, covers more than 3 million people. One in eight have opted for a consumer-driven plan. The companies found those people have seen cost increases of about 6% over the past several years instead of double-digit increases seen in most traditional plans. David Levins is along with us, Vice President at GCG Financial. That's a benefits consultancy. David, welcome back to the program. Nice to see you again. Thanks very much. Uh, when talking about these consumer health care-driven plans, uh, what's in it for the company as, uh, as they move employer employees to these types of plans? I think what's in it, um, you mentioned a little bit, is lower cost increases year to year. The whole idea is consumer driven. The employees are thinking, having more choice, taking more responsibility on their shoulders, hopefully reducing ultimate claims to insurance carriers. What, what are some considerations, though, that the boss needs to make before deciding whether or not to introduce these plans? I think if they're not willing to educate their employees, they can't go down that road. This is a, it's a process, it's an evolution. It's, you're not going to get all of your employees in a consumer driven plan year one. So that's one thing. I think the other thing is um, there's some misconception on the employee's part that um, you're not providing as good benefits. I've addressed that issue because we've heard that complaint raised, for instance, with health savings accounts saying, well, you're penalizing people uh, who do go to the doctor frequently if you move toward HSA. Sure. I think you know what we always tell people is they have to be good for the sick and the healthy. Um, the people who aren't going to the doctor obviously are going to be able to save more money in these health savings accounts or health reimbursement accounts. The people who are going to, to the doctor, um, it's got to, again, need to better health care for them as well. And I think what, what we're finding is those people who are healthy, who are not healthy, who have been paying co-pays over and over again when they go to a consumer-driven plan, once they reach their deductible, everything's covered at 100%. Right. Right. Uh, the question, of course, is that deductible, though, is higher usually in a consumer-driven plan than a standard H and lower PPO plan. Correct. Yes. Correct. So ultimately, the risk is going to be greater as well because the responsibility is there as well. Is that, that kind of the general philosophy? Exactly. It's amazing. When you talk to employees, they'll shop around 12 different phone stores for a, a cell phone. <laughs> yet when it comes to health care, the doctor says you need a certain procedure. Right. It's going to say when and where. Yeah. And part of the health health driven plans, though, is providing the tools, the health provider, the insurance company, Humana, I mentioned earlier, providing the tools to be able to, I don't want to say doctor shop, but at least look at the kind of the menu before you decide what you need to have and what you want to have. Right. All the major carriers have now um, significantly enhanced their websites so that the consumers can be provided a lot more information than they have in the past. At GCG Financial, your business, how, how many companies are migrating to these consumer plans? I'd say about a quarter of the companies we've dealt with so far have migrated to at least offering a consumer plan. Companies of all sizes? Companies of all sizes. We've seen Fair the enough. small and large employers both. Open enrollment only a few more months away, right? I if you're on a calendar plan, here you are. Enjoy summer while it's here, David, all right? Thank you. David Levitz, Executive Vice President at GCG Financial. First Business Morning News. Check your local listings for air times. It's what's happening today first. My school district, we had an insurance committee. And on this insurance committee, 
were individuals, uh, teachers, uh, cooks, uh, secretaries, uh, board members, and we were trying to figure out uh, how we might go about saving uh, the school district and the employees money. Customer driven. Making the customer uh, understand that the plan is theirs. It's not just an automatic and the amount of money that's used uh, will be determined by how much they use it, of course. I told them at the start of the process, we have only so much pie, pie meaning, meaning money. Now, we can spend an extraordinary amount on insurance, and there's no, not going to be any pie left over for salary increases. Or we can be better consumers of our health care plan, and perhaps that will free up some money where we can, in fact, provide salary <coughs> increases. So we are at one of these sessions. And on the group, we had some individuals who were hardcore, and we had some individuals who were uh, extreme users of the plan over the years and very knowledgeable about the plan. One of the individuals comes into a meeting and says to the group, we had to take my son, by the way his name was Clint, to the emergency room over the weekend. And a couple people said, oh my goodness, is he all right? Oh, he just had a cold. Oh my gosh. One of the teachers, and that was a teacher, another teacher looks him square in the eyes and said, do you realize that you just cost our plan $2,000? Had you gone to urgent care, it would have cost our plan $150. Silence. Silence. I loved it. That's the kind of consumer awareness, consumer driven understanding that the staff needs to have. The other thing that I told the staff, my, I paid the exact same thing that they paid for the coverage, and I told them as we started to tinker with the plan to find areas where we could save money, we did not want to harm the integrity of the program. It was my program just like it was their program. So that was one of the things that we were trying to accomplish uh, 